Welcome to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL, uh, your go-to channel for unlocking the best signs to a longer, healthier life. I'm uh, Professor Luigi Fontana, an MD, PhD, and the Scientific Director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and Health for Life program of the University of Sydney and a clinical academic specialist in medicine in the Department of Endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. Today we are exploring some new very interesting findings that could potentially revolutionize the way you approach fasting and may be the key to protect your, your body, your health, from potential, from potential undue damage. Yes, from potential undue damage. Listen. Researchers in a very interesting epidemiological study just published, this study comprised almost 24,000 men and women. Uh, these new data have uncover some eye-opening connection between our eating habits and patterns and the risk of dying prematurely. Yes, the, the risk of dying prematurely. <clears throat> As you know, time-restricted eating or time-restricted um, feeding patterns such as the 16-8 diet or its most extreme forms like eating once a day have become very trendy lately but the intriguing results of this new study just published as I said suggest that consuming just one meal per day is linked to a staggering 30% 30% increased risk of all-cause mortality and a striking 83-83% surge in cardiovascular mortality, cardiovascular mortality compared to, to those consuming three meals daily. Let me repeat it because it's extremely important for people who want to listen. Consuming just one meal per day is linked to a staggering 30% increased risk of, of all-cause mortality and an incredible 83% surge in cardiovascular mortality compared to those consuming three meals daily. But that's not all. The same study suggests that skipping breakfast in the in, skipping breakfast breakfast was associated with a 40% higher risk of cardiovascular mortality. So this is not new. We already knew that has already been published, you know, skipping breakfast is not a good idea, but this study reinforces the concept that skipping breakfast is associated with a 40% higher risk of cardiovascular mortality. While, whereas missing lunch and dinner increased all-cause mortality by 12% and 16% respectively. Now, there are other findings, uh, for example, among participants, uh, among men and women consuming three meals per day, those with shorter meal intervals, less than 4.5 hours between meals, faced a 17% higher risk of all-cause mortality. Therefore, it's not a good idea to keep snacking between meals. So, what does the, this mean for us? What this study suggests? What should we should reflect on be, 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 without being trapped in these fed religious dogmas? I'm fasting, don't touch me. I like my fasting. I like my 16-8 diet. I like eat, eating only once a day. So let's look at data, okay? So the key takeaway here from this study is to maintain a routine of three meals a day with intervals exceeding 4.5 hours provided yes provided you eat a nutritious mediterranean like diet rich in minimally processed whole grains legumes a wide range of vegetables nuts and seeds complemented with fish seafood 
low fat dairy, some eggs, and low glycemic fruits. So if you're eating three meals a day, you are eating junk, refined, ultra-processed food, lots of animal products, lots of meat, lots of beef, lots, lots of um, salty, sweet uh, uh, soda, that's not good. But if you are eating three meals a day, using consuming these uh, high fiber, low energy density, plant-based, mainly plant-based diet com uh, with fish and uh, low fat dairy and eggs, as, uh, as uh, confirmed by the new guidelines of the American Heart Association, you are doing well. Now, it is crucial, to be honest, to highlight that these findings are based on epidemiological data, which doesn't establish, establish causation. We are discuss about it. Epidemiological data are suggesting they are not proving anything. However, because most of the studies that have been done on intermittent fasting, the 5 to diet, the time restricted feeding are short-term studies looking at what we call uh, secondary outcomes. So basically body weight loss, uh, reduction in lipids, blood pressure, glucose, and even those, you know, the data are not so striking. But here we have mortality data. So basically they have follow-up people that were consuming one meal a day, skipping breakfast, eating uh, three meals a day. And uh, these data are suggesting that it's not a good idea to eat once a day, to skip breakfast, to skip lunch, to skip dinner, okay? Uh, it, it is clear that, you know, we need more studies to validate or refute these conclusions. Additionally, it is vital, vital to explore whether any form of fasting contributes to longevity within the context of a healthy lifestyle encompassing the pillars of well-rounded longevity as I discussed in my previous videos, scientific articles and books. So basically what I'm just trying to say is that we do not know if, uh, if you are exercising correctly, regularly, using the right type of exercise for your you know, metabolic health and fitness and genetic background, if you are eating a healthy diet with minimally processed uh, uh, food, uh, fish, uh, whole, f uh, whole grains, and all these nutrients and vitamins and minerals that are important for health while minimizing empty calories. If you are doing that and you add fasting or time with feeding, do you really have a benefit? We don't know. So, because we don't know and because of these data and other data that we just published in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in aging biology showing that intermittent fasting uh, with uh, uh, non-healthy, with a typical American diet during the feasting day, non-fasting days, does not reduce inflammation, does not improve glucose tolerance, insulin sensitivity despite significant weight loss. I think, you know, the idea of fasting and uh, time-restricted feeding should be re-evaluated by people who are uncertain on what to do. So, dear friends, that's it for today. Deep dive into the science of health and longevity. If you found this information valuable, don't forget to share it with friends who are on a quest to find scientific truths amid, this, amid the sea of disinformation fueled by feds and wishful dogmatic thinking. As always, I'm Luigi Fontana, professor of medicine, the Leonard P. Ullman Picasso Chair in Translational Metabolic Health, the scientific director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and uh, the director of the Health for Life program at the University of Sydney and a clinical academic in the Department of Endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. Thank you for joining me 
on Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL, your channel for health and longevity. Always remember that your path to a longer, healthier life begins with small, informed choices. If you want to stay updated on the latest and most exciting discoveries in this field, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Stay tuned for the newest insight to support you in living your healthiest and longest life. Until next time, stay well, stay curious and keep chasing the healthy longevity dream.